this is Kim from Emerging Creatively Tutorials, and this is ECT TV episode 13. Now, don't adjust the color on your monitors. I have dyed my hair pink. So today I'm going to teach you how to make some very simple jewelry. If you follow my blog at all, I showed um, that I recently had gotten uh, this pretty amulet and um, it's ancient and old and I love all things old and beautiful and I made it into a pendant which has quickly become my favorite piece of jewelry to wear and it's a little bit weird for me because I am a jewelry designer so I tend to think that I should be wearing more kind of flashy showy statement jewelry which I do love and I do wear a lot and I think is really cool and pretty and beautiful but I'm kind of changing right now to just a little bit simple jewelry and either way is perfectly fine some might be for some people some might be for other people and the great thing about jewelry is you can change your mind from one day to the next or even one minute to the next you could change your mind so I'm going to show you some very simple jewelry. I'm going to teach you how to make a pair of very simple earrings and a bracelet. And I'll show you how I made this necklace too. Also very simple. I actually have a lot of people who watch this series who I've heard from who actually don't make jewelry and haven't started, who are kind of thinking about making jewelry or um, have been able to fix their own jewelry because of some of the tips I've given. So this is actually perfect for all of you guys. And the components of this jewelry that I'm going to show you are very easy to find. Um, if you're in the United States, probably more so than uh, other countries. But if you're in other countries, you can still go to thrift shops, find jewelry pieces that you maybe don't like but you see like a little charm on it or the chain is really cool or you really like the beads something about it you like purchase it take it apart and then you have fresh jewelry supplies <laughs> I do that all the time and I suggest that if you don't have you know bead stores or or craft stores Everything I'm going to show you, um, except for this pendant, um, the pendant is actually from Happy Mango Beads, which is probably my favorite jewelry supply store, but everything else, um, the earrings I'm going to show you, and the bracelet I'm going to show you, I got the supplies just at AC Moore. So hopefully you have an AC Moore near you, or if not, you have some other kind of place to find some supplies and to just make these simple pieces. Alright, so I'm going to show you what you need to make um, the bracelet. Now, I don't actually like shopping at AC Moore or Michaels really for jewelry supplies that often. However, Sometimes it's nice to actually go to a store and be able to see in person what you're purchasing, you know, and touch it and make sure you're getting the right size because that all can be very confusing sometimes. And so when I was in AC Moore recently, I found this chain, which is a brass color, but it's actually just a, a base metal that is colored to look like brass um, and this is the package it was in it's called sweet beads fundamental findings and it was 48 inches but I used most of it most of this chain to actually uh, make a necklace and so this is what I've left to make my bracelet and so you only need as much chain you know to fit around your wrist so however big you like your bracelets to be. In general, what I do, I like my bracelets to be a little loose. So I'll measure tightly around my wrist, and then I'll um, cut the chain to that size, and then the, when I add the clasp, it will make it kind of loose. Um, if you like a tighter bracelet, then when you're cutting your chain, 
um, take the size of the bracelet, uh, the, take the size of the clasp into consideration when you are cutting your chain. So you'll need that, and you can use any um, brass chain that you like, and actually you can use this technique to make really any bracelet you like, not just the one I'm showing you. And then I found these, they are little leaves, and they are on this chain, and I actually, now that I'm thinking about it, I think I also went to Michael's that day, these might be from Michael's, because I think that this is from Michael's. Um, but these are silver leaves, which I really thought were pretty, um, and I really love the silver and the brass together. And then you're also going to need, um, some jump rings, and you're just going to need a few, and then you'll need a clasp, which I, you can get the clasp at AC Moore as well. Um, I've had these jump rings, but I'm pretty sure they sell them there, too. And then as far as tools, um, you're going to need wire cutters. That's to cut your chain. Um, and you're going to need two pairs of pliers. So I'm going to use chain nose and bet nose, um, which you'll need to open your jump rings. So first things first, I kind of already showed you this, you're going to want to cut your chain to size. And to do that, like I said, you decide how long you want your bracelet to be. And I like mine to be a little bit loose. So what I do is just measure the chain close and then the clasp will make it kind of loose. So and you just use wire cutters to cut the chain. or Usually, you can take apart chain um, with pliers because each link will have a little opening. So you can just use two pairs of pliers and pull it apart like you would a jump ring. So we have that. So I have removed two feathers, the little feather charms, off of the chain that I had. And I'm just going to put them kind of together on one jump ring on my bracelet. Alright, so now I'll show you how to open up a jump ring so that you can add the charms to the chain. I'm using a 7mm jump ring. So the first thing you have to find is the opening in the jump ring. And then you're going to take two pairs of pliers and position them so they're on either side of the opening. Now I'm using bent nose pliers and a pair of chain nose pliers, and bent nose pliers are perfect for opening jump rings. Now with one of my hands, I am going to pull straight toward me, and with my other hand, I'm going to roll straight away from me. And we're going to open this jump ring, but keep the circle intact. So we're not going to pull apart, we're going to go forward and backwards. So just like that. So you can kind of see that it's still a circle, but it is open. And you just have to get it open enough so that the chain and the charms can slide on. So now I'm going to grab my chain that we cut earlier. And I'm going to find the middle and, you know, sort of eyeball it and then add my jump ring. And now I kind of like the idea of the two leaves together on one ring. Kind of like it, it looks kind of layered and kind of keeps it simple. So I'm putting both of them on as well. And now we're just going to close the jump ring. So you do the same thing but in reverse. And then I like to go back and forth a little, a couple times past the point that it would be closed. And then you will kind of feel it click into place or sometimes even hear a click. Um, most of the time. Sometimes that doesn't happen. And just make sure it's closed tightly. And I usually just take my pliers and 
do that. All right. So this is basically the bracelet. Like I said, it's a very simple design. So now we just need to add our clasp. And you just add the clasp exactly the same way um, with a jump ring. So sometimes it's good to open up a few jump rings ahead of time, which I have done with this. Pick an end of your chain, add the jump ring, and then slide on the clasp. Oops. And this again, close your jump ring. And then on the other side, I'm just going to go ahead and add just a couple of jump rings and now when I originally I had made this bracelet before for myself I actually added another little charm um, to the end a little heart so you can add a charm there you could put another feather there if you want or you could just leave it plain and it's nice to have like at least two jump rings I find even if it you don't use the other ends. For some reason, it's easier to get the bracelet on. I'm not sure why. I guess you have a little more leverage to deal with. So that is our simple bracelet. Now you could also make a necklace in exactly the same way, except for you would make the chain longer, obviously, so it would fit around your neck. Um, and you can obviously, if you don't want to go so simple, you can add more charms to your chain um, and kind of do whatever you would like to do. And this bracelet is cool to just wear by itself if you're going for like a simple look or to layer with other bracelets. So that is the bracelet. So I just wanted to show you quickly um, how you can make a like beautifully simple necklace as well. You can use the what I just showed you how to do for a bracelet. It's basically exactly the same. Um, this was a pendant that kind of came exactly how you see it and I just made the chain and slid it on. So I just added, I cut the chain to a length I wanted which is very long and then I added the jump ring and the clasp to the end, or actually I probably slid this on first. And it's really that simple. So maybe you have a pendant on a necklace that maybe doesn't quite fit the way you want it to, maybe you want it to be a little longer, or maybe you wish the chain was a little shorter. So that's how you can fix it. You can just buy chain cut it to the size you want and then slide your pendant on or if it doesn't slide over the chain you can just use a jump ring and attach it right to the chain and now you know how to do that. So to make these earrings we're gonna basically need the same tools um, so You'll need your wire cutters, chain nose pliers, um, but you're going to also need round nose pliers. And plus you're going to need something cylindrical to bend wire around, which um, I'm just going to use this paintbrush. Um, I'm going to use the same feather charms. We have plenty left. And then I have two three inch head pins or if you just have some brass wire I didn't happen to have any but I had these long head pins or actually if you don't want to make your own earring wires simply buy the earring wires already made at the store you will find them in the same section where the chain is um, I think the same company makes earring wires so to get started 
if you are using head pins, um, we're just going to cut the very tip off, the kind of, I guess, the head part of the head pin, um, the part that would keep the bead from sliding. And then just grab your whatever you're using. I'm using a paintbrush. Um, maybe a pen would work. And then I'm just doing both of these wires at the same time so they're the same. And I'm going to bend them around. And I'll show you kind of. It's not in half, so one side is a little bit longer than the other side. And then I'm just going to use chain nose pliers. And make a little bend in them. So if you were careful, the end that is going to go in your ear, use the end that you didn't cut the head off of. Um, but if you didn't, if you if this is the end you did cut, or you might want to do this anyway get a jewelry file and just file the end off so it doesn't snag in your ear. Or if you don't have a jewelry file, I have found you can basically use any file that you might have around if you're just careful or even carefully use sandpaper and um, you just rub it against it a few times and it will be okay. And then on the other end, you need to make a little loop. So. I'm doing this as close to the tip of my round nose pliers as I can. And I have the longer end of the earring wire face toward me. And then the wire should be not poking through the top but at the very tip top of your pliers. And then you're just going to roll away from you. You're going to twist your wrist away from you. and we're making a loop as we go around and after you take your wrist as far as it will go come back readjust get that loop right in the same spot on your plier and make sure that you know the wire is tightly on the pliers and then finish the loop and it will kind of look like a P and then just do the same thing for the other earring wire. So that is how you make earring wires. So I've just grabbed two more of the feather charms. And now we're just going to open up this loop you just made on your earring wire exactly the same way I showed you how to open um, a jump ring but you can actually just hold the earring with one hand and then use your pliers with the other hand and open it toward you and make sure you know you keep the circle intact then just place the charm in and then close and then repeat it for the other earring And now you have a simple but pretty pair of earrings. So I hope you've enjoyed learning how to make this simple pair of earrings and simple bracelet. And um, you can also make a necklace in this way as well. And feel free, of course, to add more charms or use the techniques I showed you to make whatever jewelry you want to make. If you want to see a photographic tutorial of how to make these uh, pieces, come over to my blog at www.kimberlycoler.com. The link will be below the video. And while you're there, if you sign up for my email newsletter, you can get future 
ECT TV episodes sent to you in PDF form so you can easily download the projects or print them so you can take them to your work table and and use them from there. It's a little bit easier to use but sign up for my newsletter to do that and I will see you next week.